engage with the modeling years. Modeling years correctly called uh, drilling units uh, engineer. He is the person responsible for creating or maintaining fluids mod uh, that are being used for drilling process on uh, drilling uh, rigs in uh, oil or gas or water wells. Uh, when we said creating, uh, or maintaining because indicates more but sometimes we see more problems or other then that I just we want the mod of maintaining the battery. Uh, now, uh, in here, uh, we are uh, to uh, information about mod development. Uh, Okay, mud engineer before, in the last time we had, as they called him a uh, mud man or like this, but now because of, uh, most of people in the oil industry now are educated, it's being this with engineer. Now, most of mud engineer now. Uh, mud engineer roles, the main duty of mod engineer is to create a mod that will be used during the different stages of the drilling uh, process. Uh, and uh, another ro rules uh, maintain properties of drilling fluid and monitor circulation system during uh, process to assure well bore stability. Here, the, we're talking about the, to create MOP and then to maintain these properties by treatment, by uh, when you make the test, you know what the change and you have to add some chemical or add or to do something to maintain your properties as both uh, requirements. Drill, drilling practice things will help reach the drilling objectives never require to drilling fluids. Uh, drilling practice gains that will uh, help reach objectives that require a relief and drill. It's, this here will make this rule especially will make the difference between the experienced mod engineer and the mod engineer is just following the mod program or uh, Because when, uh, if we have, we need to have a program, just make what the client did with thing to what the parameters, what the uh, uh, chemicals, and we have uh, he has good uh, provides combinations to buy for the specialist will benefit to his will give good as because the uh, Art is not just science. Uh, 
you to because some too uh, uh okay and uh, another rule wants to calculate the estimate uh, cost of drilling and extraction uh, versus projected uh, profits since the engineer play a large role play have the additional duty of calculating a portion of the cost associated with the drilling boots. Uh, this cost has a cost, but this is uh, usually it's, uh, automatically by mod report, it will be uh, automatically, it's not uh, in manual way. Uh, now, no mod engineer can uh, calculate the cost manually. Usually, this is done by softwares and, and uh, mod report, in mod report. Okay, the routine rules. This is on daily basis. We perform full drilling fluid test, make sub and submit daily reports. This is we make the full drilling fluid test twice a day, sometimes three times a day. This depends. Uh, make and submit also mud recaps by the end of wells. And okay, perform uh, also regular uh, physical inventory for materials, reagents, and testing equipment. This is the three uh, last rules. This is the routine job for the mud engineer. It's uh, happened on daily basis or uh, the drilling fluid test twice per day at least, and uh, daily report, it's uh, one report daily at least, the mud recap end of the well, the regular physical inventory daily basis for reagents and testing equipment, maybe you can make it weekly or bi-weekly. Uh, now, ISO rigs. Drill rigs are classified as the drilling uh, land rigs and offshore rigs. And offshore rigs has uh, two types: floating rigs and bottom supported. And also the floating rigs, it's uh, two types: is semi-submersible, and another one is the drill ship. The bottom supported, it's three types: is jackup and platform and badge. But for the mud engineer, this is all is not important because your mud engineering is a mud engineering in each type of rigs. Is regardless the rig type is onshore or offshore, it's bottom supported is, or floating rigs. This is mud engineering is same in all rigs. Uh, uh, rig components. This here is the rig. And uh, we we talking about the recombinant system. We have circulating system and hoisting system and uh, power system, rotating system, and blowout prevention system. Okay, uh, we talking about the hoisting system here. Hoisting system is a, a crown block, the dead line, drilling line, fast line. Traveling block and uh, draw works. Uh, this is a set of equipment necessary for handling any material inside the well, drill string on and the casing. Uh, it consists of a structure, a bar, the deck or mast uh, structure, uh, the complex of the crown, 
uh, the complex of the crown and traveling block, the drawers, hoist, and the drilling line. The substructure is a supporting base for the derrick, the drawer, and rotary table, and constitutes uh, the working floor of for operation or drilling floor. Uh, rotating system, uh, we have a rotary table and a swivel. This is uh, in uh, all rigs. In modern rigs now, we have top drive groups. This is uh, one in uh, three in one. It's a TDS. It's a, uh, instead of uh, Kelly and uh, swivel, and uh, he do the same for uh, the both of them do some uh, same uh, target or same action it's uh, rotating okay now here circulation system this here is the life of modern engineer here this circulation system consists of uh, here bump mud bump and uh, lines section line and discard line stand by pressure stand by rotary hose and swivel kili or TDS and uh, it mud will come from the mud tanks through section line by bump to discharge line then he will go to rotary hose by standby by rotary hose then will go inside uh, the drill pipe through the TDS or uh, kili uh, We'll go inside the drill pipe, then we'll go inside the hole, uh, inside the drill pipe, inside the BHA, then we'll go out from uh, nozzles through uh, bit. He will go to annulus, then we return to the flow line. Here, there's the return line here in picture. In flow line, then he will come to build some building or cutting box uh, from assembly will come to uh, shakers shell shakers this is the fairest now uh, fairest uh, defender uh, uh, for the solids uh, or fairest solid control equipment this is a shell shaker then from shaker after screening he will uh, mod will go uh, to uh, sand trap, then after sand trap to be filled, he by overflowing the mud will come to the uh, settling tank, and also after fill settling tank, he will go overflowing uh, to uh, the gazer tank or the sander or the silter or the center view. This is all sent, uh, solid control equipment. Sometimes we run all, sometimes we run part of them. Depends on the operation. So, when the mud comes from settling tank to uh, degazer and uh, inside the degazer and discharge, the discharging mud will go to another tank. Then desander or desilter or mud cleaner will take this mud and again also the discharge mod will go to another tank. It's uh, by sequence. Now uh, the mod will go to uh, uh, bus all this solid control equipment, then will go to the intermediate tanks, then again to section tanks and start the new journey to go to the bomb and go again inside the hole. And like here, the mud engineer prepares a good mud in the mud tanks in the section. And when the mud is a go to the, this long journey and go to inside the hole and react to the formation in annulus, then again to come back to solid control equipment, we do to. Uh, remove the solids mechanically by solid control equipment. Then here we have to test our mud or check 
our mod from time to time to check the mod parameters and maintain and treat here this is the mod engineer role the main role here it's a mod proper when the go inside the hole but when it's go outside the hole here we have to check our mod and uh, treat or add some chemicals or make anything to make our mud in proper way. This is, is a head closed hydraulic circuit uh, mud from section tanks and again to section tank, from section to section. And also we have to uh, observe our volumes here because if we lost some volume or you gain some volume this will make big problem here we have to know our mud in the mud tanks and our whole volume and we know uh, our volume is uh, stable or not okay from the mud from hole has to have have the cuttings removed uh, before being the bottom. The mud pump supplies the energy necessary for circulation. Uh, the choice of the drilling fluid is mainly by the characteristic of, of the formation to be by their debris and reactivity to and by the problem of this bone of the spin fluid. Here, when we talking about the choice of drilling fluid, that means of drilling fluid, this is the, it's, uh, sometimes we have formation has the water, for example, and we need to uh, drink this water or like this, we, in that time, we cannot drill this formation by some material make uh, environmental issue for uh, people or for uh, animals. So the choice of drilling fluid, this is many uh, factors here, sometimes environment, sometimes the cost, also the reactivity of the formation itself, because if formation is the clay and it will absorb too much water, here we have to prevent swelling. This when the clay take the water, it will uh, clay is will well. In that we have this swelling will make two props in uh, one. In that way, that point, we have to make uh, mud or inhibitive chemicals to uh, prevent this swelling happen. We will talk about this in detail uh, now for uh, recombot also have well blow out breathers and shock the fall breathers from it don't go uh, in nails it's just we know this is uh, some of uh, part of equipment of rig equipment also we have power equipment power generation system is leaked for the machines driving the components of the rig and it's provided by diesel yes diesel electric engines uh, okay with classifications here uh, drilling fluid is many types is uh, oil based fluids or water based fluids dynamic fluids it's a uh, the common uh, The common types is the water bases have two types. 
is also is non inhibitory or this is react because if we have reactive as we say if you have reactive formations in the inhibitive mode if we have a milestone or a sandstone is need to make uh, your mode is inhibitive because this is just uh, eating your uh, for oil base, this is uh, the type depends on the base fluid. The base fluid from diesel, sometimes mineral or sometimes non petroleum hydrocarbon. Uh, we use mineral or non hydrocarbon hydrocarbon. This is for environmentalists. For example, in offshore, we use the mineral uh, oil, but onshore, usually we use diesel. This also depends on the client and uh, in the client or in the area what you drill. Uh, for pneumatic fluids, this is for uh, usually uh, we have some uh, cases for underbalanced drilling. This is we used foam or mist or dry gas or gasified mud. This is when we use mud with the very less mud density. Uh, now, mud factions versus mud borobaratis. Okay, mud faction, uh, we know the mud factions is uh, as a point, but we need to make some relationship between mud faction and which faction lead to which borobarities? Borobarities affect this faction. Controlling formation breach, this is a very function. We need MOP to control formation pressure because you make a hole, that means some pressure will come. You have to control this pressure. When we said controlling formation pressures, we are talking about here, the probability here is a mud density or uh, ECD. Mud density in the static condition or uh, ECD is the equivalent circulating density. Equivalent circulating density, this is in dynamic. It's a dynamic mud weight. When, because when you, in your dynamic condition, that means your mud bump is on. Mud bump is on, that means you have more pressure than the hydrostatic column. Okay, when we talking about the controlling formation pressures, here we have to think mud density or ECD. But ECD also he has some relationship with another function because ECD calculated by long uh, equation depends on uh, annual velocity depends on the hole size, depends on the clearance between the hole and uh, string, and also depends on the uh, type of flow and laminar or turbulent. This is, has many factors, but the main factor here, information pressures, we are talking about the density, mud density. This is, we check mud density by mud balance, and you will find in uh, each paper or like this in units BBG bound per gallon or uh, specific graffiti SG or sometimes it's BCF bound cubic foot bound per cubic foot and uh, also some clients is they working by KBA per, per uh, meter uh, kilopascal per meter but the common one is the BBG and SG. This is the common units. Okay, the second function, removing cuttings from the well bore. Removing cuttings from well bore here, this, when we're talking about remove cuttings, that means we're talking about the hole cleaning. Hole cleaning, here the probability will be the viscosity and 
theology in general. We call remove cuttings. That means we take the cuttings outside from the hole to uh, outside. Here we are talking about the viscosity and yield point and rheology in general. And the readings, fan readings for 600 reading, 300 reading, uh, 200 reading, 100, 6, and 3. This is the six fan readings uh, with the rheometer. And we also we are talking about here many factors. Uh, it's calculate. It's come by calculations. This is a type of flow, uh, velocity. It's uh, uh, appearance viscosity. It's uh, we're talking about also low shear rate viscosity here uh, and YB and viscosity. All really, and this is really it will be as a special science. Yeah. We, we cannot go in now deeply, just we are introduced here some points in the engineering. But in another session, inshallah, we will talking about uh, issues in details. Now, the third function is reading and releasing cuttings. With suspend and releasing. What? When we suspend, we need mud suspend cuttings, and when we need the mud release the cutting. Suspend cuttings while static condition, because sometimes we store them, and we still we have some cuttings inside the hole. We need this cutting is suspended, not to fall out again. Here we are talking about the gel. The probability here is okay. And re cuttings here we talk about the gel strings, but breaking gel. When we start, our bomb, we need to break this gel, fragile gel or flat gel, and we have progressive gel. This progressive gel is not recommended because if we stop long time and this gel is too progressive that means we cannot break the gel because we need to release now this suspension خلاص. we we want to start our circulation again here we are talking about the gel strings this is the third function of map it will going to the gel strings okay the fourth function Minimize formation damage. Minimize formation damage. Talking about the filter cake thickness or filtrate and also solids because formation damage it's happened by if solids drill solids going uh, bare mobile formation. Close for us, or we have too much filtration. That means too much filtration, filtrate going inside the formation. This will make the two minimize the formation damage by make proper filtration, proper filtration, and good filter cake in, uh, less less thickness and also we don't need to uh, too much solids in the map we need the lowest value of solids okay uh, when we set filtration we have as a probability in the material board you will find two type of filtration you will find abi filtration this is a normal and we have also high pressure high temperature filtration Right in British filtration, this is in some situations uh, when we are drilling uh, very high temperature uh, well or uh, the formation in uh, very high temperature and high pressure, we need to check our polymer in these uh, conditions.
then we'll go to another function. Is still better for me. There are considerations mainly about the example formation. I make good cake. We, we need good quality filter cake. Okay. As we said, we have test for also for bridging. We have a test for bridging called or permitty blogging test. We're talking about ceiling bearable formations, and the test is the permeability logging test to know how our bridging is going on in the month. If uh, or, uh, the distribution of real also of the size of the material. The function, what function is the ten well bore stability. Well bore stability, we are well bore stability. Uh, maintain both the mechanical or talking here is the stability pressure. We have some for or mobile fish you need to brace station for uh brevization this formation. We are talking about density or weight. Gaining more stability about inhibition and also sometimes uh, because we know we can make it or uh, Sometimes we smoke to dehydration because in osmotic, in osmosis, the fluid is going from low side to high side. And uh, inhibit too much material is too much case of uh, chemical, but by the chemical way, we mix reaction to prevent for uh, the number seven. It's calling corrosion. Growing corrosion, corrosion happen in thick environment. We are talking now about beach or alkalinity. BH or alkalinity that we need our mud all the time is alkaline. It's BH more than eight 
or 8.5 to prevent this corrosion. And also we have to uh, observe because sometimes with drill formation has acidic for uh, acidic gases. These acidic gases will make our BHs down. Uh, in that time, we have to increase our pH to maintain our mud alkaline and prevent corrosion for downhole tools. Cool and lubricate bit and drill string. When we said cool, here we are going to temperature because um, it's coming from inside the hole. Here, we check our flow line bridge. Because we have uh, two things. The first, some chemicals is not working in the high temperature. We know we need to know the temperature to check our chemical still working or not. Because we have some chemicals to supply this uh, polymer to work. We will stabilize as a stabilizing temperature. Okay. And also, uh, we have some tools or like this in BOB or. Uh, he has limit for uh, limitation for uh, for temperature for high temperature. In this uh, for this case, sometimes we uh, 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 this is as a solid control equipment, but just for cooling. It's just not. Uh, it's going from uh, we bring the unit and make the connections to the tanks. To take from the intermediate, for example, the mud, hot mud, and it will go into the unit cooling, and the cool mud will come to the section tanks. But usually, uh, this uh, mud cooler is uh, costly. Is uh, most of clients they didn't request it. Uh, if a uh, mud cooler is not available, you have to apply it long system and uh, let the mud come by overflowing to get time to cool for this cycle. From, from section tanks, it will go to inside the hole and come from flow line. He let the mud come from flow line to sand trap and settling and intermediate and section. Don't make short system because short system will give you a high temperature. They will not give not chance to cool down. Okay, and when we said also lubricate, lubricating, uh, we are talking here about the uh, torque. When the torque is high, here we need lubricity. In mud. we need some lubricant or lubricant in mud. We will add some lubricants to our mud, and we will check this lubricity percentage by retort test. Okay, here uh, transmit hydraulic energy to tools and bit. Here we are talking about hydraulic parameters. We have too much hydraulic parameters and calculation depends on the uh, mud bump pressure and uh, nozzle size. We're talking here about HSI, hydraulic horse uh, power per, in per square inch. We are talking about the impact force. We are talking about, uh, this is will too much uh, details in this hydraulics. But when we set the mud as a function here, transmit hydraulic, energy to tools and bit here we are talking about the hydraulic parameters we need the pressure or like this is getting like we this is uh, uh what will be the carrier or the transmission this hydraulic energy to the uh, bottom uh, another 
uh, another function here, uh, ensure adequate uh, formation evaluation. Here, again, we're talking about the whole cleaning and viscosity ideology, because if you are drilling and you have not enough uh, or proper viscosity or e, uh, y, YB or yield boy, that means the cuttings will not come in the actual time or it will not come all. Here we cannot evaluate this, informa this formation and know the type of formation and the, uh, this is the specification of formation. Okay, and uh, also facil facilitate cementing and completion. Here we are talking about the cost and drilling days also. We need to make proper hole by proper mud. This is, will save our time because we will run casing successfully. We will cement, we will uh, perform our cement job without any issue. Here we are saving cost, we are saving drilling days, we are saving time. The last function is to minimize impact on the environment. Here, uh, no property is uh, this because this is general function. Just we need to min minimize the impact on the uh, environment. Okay. Uh, different mod properties may affect a particular mod function. If the mod engineer gains only one or two properties to control a given drilling fluid function, another may uh, be affected as well. Because this is all we know now here, our function and properties. This is not parameters related together. You, when you, you want to treat or to maintain some probability, for example, if you increase the mod weight, here you will increase the solids, definitely. If you increase, for example, your uh, viscosity or like this, he will reduce uh, your filtration. If you use all, all the parameters, it's related together. That's why this here, the mud engineer rule, you have to play in the parameters here to make it all as required as a package. We need the good mud. We don't talk about, we need this, just a need good reality because you can make good reality, but you will affect another parameter here for the client, this is not a good mark. We need all parameters in good or proper shape together. Okay, mark properties should be recognized for their influence on all functions and the relative importance of each function. And when functions clash, drilling fluid engineering almost always requires trade of entreating, entreating and maintaining the properties needed to accomplish uh, require the requires. Here, this is knowledge, experience, and well managed are the right way to control working in rope of quality and competence because you need to increase something, but you have to maintain. Sometimes you need to increase the salinity, but we don't increase the mud weight. But we know if you add salt, you will increase the mud weight. Here you have to find a way to increase the salinity without affect our mud weight. Or we need to increase the viscosity by using clay material, bentonite, for example, but we have to maintain our MBT. We need to increase the inhibition level by adding anything, but we need to maintain the viscosity or rheology. Here this, we need well management. This will come by knowledge and experience. We have to learn, we have to work. If you work more and learn more, you will get a way to uh, 
control this uh, because we are we are all here we are looking for quality and competence uh, this is uh, last uh, slide for this session and I hope this session is uh, valued and beneficial for all uh, audience and uh, uh, now uh, now uh, better check if uh, we have some questions or uh, we have still time or no because we stopped too much time again uh, I apologize for this uh, too much topic and thank you for uh, all participants to uh, uh, attend this session.